In this video, we're going to continue down the path of saving on a fixed income. But we're going to focus more on what to do once you are able to save some investable funds. I'm Jesse S. Gimes, and this is Gig Finance. Welcome back. So you're on a fixed income and you've been able to budget by writing down all of your mandatory bills, the ones necessary to survive, along with your income. And you've concluded that after paying your mandatory bills, you have some surplus. Congratulations. It's surplus that you've been spending on junk like everyday fast food and drinks, impulse buys and small bills from phone apps and subscriptions. You've swallowed the pill concerning eliminating all of those additional liabilities and you're now on the road to savings. We've determined that 70% of Americans don't have $1,000 in savings and now you're on your way to becoming the 30% who do. The fact is, it may take you a few weeks or months to save up that first $1,000 and perhaps some more time to save up at least $2,000. I want to stress the fact that in order to secure your ability to invest, you have to at least have about $1,000 set aside that is liquid, meaning easily accessible for emergencies and unforeseen situations like car repairs, flat tires, or God forbid, medical expenses, etc. You must become disciplined in building those funds as well. And once you build upon that thousand dollars to the point that it doubles, you can now pull out some of those funds and steer them towards investments that pay you interest and furthermore, compound interest. But what do you do once you have that thousand dollars? Uh, or $2,000 actually. So with the $2,000, you set aside half of that for emergencies and you should have about $1,000 to invest. Remember, these are funds that you would not have had you continued down the same path of impulse spending. You have settled in your soul that these funds really don't even exist. This takes discipline. Forget, forget about vacations, forget about entertainment for a while. And you will thank me later and you'll thank yourself later. So what do you do with the thousand dollars? You must understand that when investing, there may be just as much chance of losing money than there is gaining money. And so you don't want to gamble with your thousand dollars. You don't want to gamble with your investable funds. You don't want to dive into cryptos and stocks. This may potentially take you on an emotional roller coaster that you may not be able to handle at this level. So there are plenty of good stock and crypto investments, but it's going to take a lot of research and potentially hiring a financial advisor to help with that. So what do you do? Where do you put your money? Today, I'm going to cover three solid investment ideas that have a good rate of return and are low risk. So let's cover the easy ones first before we get into the last two, my favorites, CDs and bonds. So number one, interest bearing holding accounts. Now a holding account is a bit different than a traditional savings account. A holding account is typically an investment account that you hold your money in until you decide where to invest those funds. The good news about holding accounts nowadays is that many of them pay you interest in the form of an APY. APY stands for annual percentage yield and it's the amount of money they pay you out yearly for holding your funds in their account. Now, my two favorite holding accounts are from Robinhood and Coinbase. So let's start with Robinhood. When you open a Robinhood account and connect it to your bank account, 
you will be able to fund that account. And the main purpose they want you to fund the account is so that when you see a stock or a cryptocurrency that's on the up and up, uh, you will develop FOMO and invest your funds in that stock or cryptocurrency. FOMO stands for fear of missing out. And this is a psychological emotion that people have. And it's very real. It is responsible for impulse spending and the main reason that new investors lose money. We see a security going up and we get the feeling that it will continue to go up and up. And in fear of missing out, we invest in it. Later, it crashes and puts us in the negative. We invested $1,000. Now you have $750 left. So we sell the stock at a loss in fear of losing more money, essentially losing about 250 bucks. That's a demonstration. The same goes for impulse buys. These are, these are the times when we see something on display like buy one, get one free for a limited time. We buy it now and buy it today, not realizing that we never needed the product. And the reason we actually bought it was FOMO. So Robinhood wants you to fund that account so that you can easily invest it when FOMO starts. And the good news is that they give investors an incentive to fund that account in the form of currently 5% APY. They will pay you 5% interest on all of the money that you have in that holding account. So for a quick, easy example, by depositing $1,000 in a Robinhood holding account, one year later, you will have $1,050. Now, $50 may not sound like a lot to you at the moment, but if you were walking down the street and saw a $50 bill on the floor, I can imagine you would be quite excited. So think of it as free money. That's what interest is. It's the fruit that you receive from planting a seed and waiting for the harvest. But wait, there's more. If you deposit $1,000 in a 5% APY account and then deposit $200 a month into that account, by the end of the year, you will have a little over $3,500 and over $100 out of that is free money. If you invest that $3,500, you're now making what's called compound interest. That's interest on your free money. So by reinvesting the 3,500 and continuing to deposit $200 a month, at the end of the next year, you will have about $6,130. Not bad for a $1,000 investment in a $200 a month budget. But let's get deeper. At the end of three years, you'll have $8,892. At the end of four years, you'll have $11,792. And at the end of five years, you'll have $14,837. Now that's almost $2,000 of free money. If you had put your $1,000 in a piggy bank and then added 200 bucks a month, you would only have saved up about 13,000 after five years. So, that's Robin Hood for you. That's compound interest. That's 5% ATY. Now let's talk about uh, Coinbase, which is very similar to Robin Hood, but it's geared towards crypto investing. However, you don't actually have to invest in any crypto. We're simply talking about using their database as a holding account in order to receive their incentive, their interest. So when you open a Coinbase account and connect your bank account and deposit funds into US dollar coin, Coinbase will pay you 5.10% APY. Now keep in mind that these are the current rates at the making of this video. It's March of 2024. And these rates are subject to change in the future. They may go up, they may go down. And remember, as I mentioned in my last video, that you have to start thinking long-term and get your mind out of weekly and monthly terms, get rich quick scams, start thinking one year, three year, five year, at least for beginners. And at last, but certainly not least, let's move on to number three, CDs and bonds. Companies and governments issue debt securities or bonds to raise money to fund day-to-day -day operations and finance large projects. So 
for investors, fixed income instruments pay a set interest rate return in exchange for investors lending their money to them. So how would you like to be a lender? Uh, at the maturity date, investors are repaid the original amount that they had originally invested, known as the principal. For example, a company might issue a 5% bond with a $1,000 face or par value that matures in five years. So the investor buys the bond for $1,000 and will not be paid back until the end of the five years. Now, over the course of the five years, the company pays interest payments called coupon payments based on a rate of 5% per year. As a result, the investor is paid $50 per year for five years. And at the end of the five years, the investors is repaid the $1,000 they initially invested on that maturity date. So investors may also find fixed income investments that pay coupon payments monthly, quarterly, or semi-annually. So uh, fixed income securities like bonds or CDs are recommended for conservative investors seeking a diversified portfolio. Uh, the percentage of the portfolio dedicated to fixed income depends on the investor's investment style. So there's also an opportunity to diversify the portfolio with a mix of fixed income products and stocks, creating a portfolio that might have 50% uh, in fixed income products and 50% in stocks. But this may not be for you at the moment. For starters, you might just want to do a 100% fixed income products and it really reduces the risk that you will have in losing any of the money that you've invested. So treasury bonds and bills, municipal bonds, corporate bonds, and CDs, certificates of deposit, are all examples of fixed income products. Bonds also trade over the counter, OTC, on the bond market and secondary market, so they can be sold. Some types of fixed income products are the ones that I just mentioned, but as stated earlier, the most common example of a fixed income security is a government or corporate bond. So the most common government securities are those issued by the U.S. government and are generally referred to as uh, treasury securities. So fixed income securities are offered by non-US governments and corporations as well. So this is something that you definitely want to look into. Uh, you can actually go online and Google treasury bonds or United States government bonds. That treasury website will pop up and you could purchase government bonds right through the website. These are very low risk. Now, there are ones that are higher risk, like rates, real estate investment trusts, um, and many other. I, I don't want to confuse you, and I know I may be speaking another language at this point. So let's just focus in on, on those for the moment, because typically the higher percentage yield that you get, uh, the more risk there is. So if you get a bond from a company that hasn't been open for a long time, if that company goes bankrupt, you might lose all of your money that you invested. But so you want to make sure that these are secure. Government bonds are the most secure. They don't pay a whole lot of money, but we're talking about four or 5% on your return. That's free money. And so if you're able to invest, you know, uh, on, a, on a regular basis, say on a monthly basis, you could be on your way to getting a big return in the long run. So with Robinhood and those other accounts, we don't know how long those accounts, those holding accounts are going to pay five, 5.10% 5 APY, but at the moment they do. So if you're able to utilize those holding account for the moment um, and gain that, that return, that would be the best situation for you. If this persists, 
for uh, two, three, four years, you will have saved up thousands of dollars that you can obviously put towards better investments or larger investments. Some people just stick with bonds and secure uh, 5% APY, everything, you know. So stocks, uh, most stocks wish they got 5%, uh, gain 5% per year. So with gaining 5% on your money, that's a lot of money. And if it's secure, there are not many other better ways to invest your funds. So try to go for that. Uh, again, my name is Jesse S. Gines, and this is Gig Finance.